Hey everyone, except for right now, the rest of the episode, I won't be in it. I'm off on assignment and I'm not allowed to have anyone follow me or film me or record me or mimic me. What? Teddy, and I travel through time. I'm constantly rushing from one time dimension to another. I'm from the future, where the government put a chip inside my brain to track my whereabouts. Because the government is tracking me, I have to stay on the move. If I don't, the government zeroes in on my location and jolts me with a phaser dimensional Betatron shock. I promised Ken I would host this episode, so I'm going to stick around no matter how much it hurts. Also, I hope I do a satisfactory job hosting this episode because I don't have the vibrant charm or natural charisma that Ken does. Ken did offer up some advice on how to be a successful host. Here's what he told me. Shoulders back, chin out, smile. For this episode, I went through Ken's files and discovered an interesting case. It's actually more of a profile about a most devious and unscrupulous individual. Who is this individual? Let's find out. There's an ultra secret government agency that's called Intelligence One. The agency is so confidential that not even the president or members of Congress are aware of its existence. Even the deep state shadow government is unaware of Intelligence One. The agency was founded in 1976 by this man. Ken wasn't able to ascertain a clear image of him, nor was he able to uncover his real name. He did learn the agent's code name, the Vulture. The Vulture was a master of disguises and a crackerjack spy who excelled at subversive counter-espionage activities. Since day one, the Vulture has- I'm okay, don't worry. The Vulture has headed up many of Intelligence One's most nefarious operations. For example, in 1978, he stole the Eiffel Tower and replaced it with a forgery. That's right. The current Eiffel Tower isn't the original, and no one, not even the French, realizes. this. Ken's theory is that the real Eiffel Tower is being stored in a large warehouse somewhere on the outskirts of Hackensack, New Jersey. The following year, the vulture disguised himself as a Buckingham Palace guard. He kidnapped the queen and replaced her with an imposter. According to Ken's file, the current queen is a paid actor. Ken wasn't able to find out too much about the actor other than the actor's name, Marion Morrison. According to Ken's research, Marion appeared in a number of Hollywood films under an assumed name before faking his death in 1979 to take on the challenging role of playing the Queen. In 1980, the Vulture coordinated efforts with extraterrestrials to help them execute their own fake landings on the moon. The aliens, known as Zoltrans, were impressed with the Vulture's involvement with the NASA fake moon landings of the late 1960s and early 1970s. The Vulture's expertise in producing fake moon landings proved invaluable to the aliens. Apparently, 99.9% .9 of Zoltrans believed they actually landed on the Earth's moon when it was in fact all simulated in the southwest of the United States. An ongoing project over the years for the Vulture has involved fire hydrants. 
Intelligence One uses fire hydrants to not only track the citizenry in any given area, but also to send out hypnotic subsonic audio waves. The waves are intended to cause mass confusion amongst the populace as well as upset dogs. Occasionally, cats will get upset too. The long-term effect of the audio waves is not known, but Ken believes the neurological impact to the central nervous system could be devastating. He personally avoids being in the vicinity of fire hydrants for extended periods of time. Ken's report, which was written in 2018, concludes that he does not know the current whereabouts of the vulture. Intelligence One has an excellent pension plan, and so he suspects the vulture may have retired to an undisclosed tropical island, as his research uncovered the vulture as having a fondness for pineapples, especially if they are fresh. But it's important to keep in mind that the vulture could still be actively engaged in carrying out fiendish plots anywhere in the world. Hi. We've reached the conclusion of this week's episode, and I hope you've had as much fun watching it as I've had making it. <laughs> I'm okay. But I do think it's time for me to move on. So we'll see you sometime. You never know which time. Bye now. Hey everyone, my mission was accomplished. And the reason why it's not an episode is because I was pursuing the invisible man. And thusly I had to become invisible too. So there wouldn't have been anything to see. gift for hosting this week's episode of The Lie Detector. Emerson, Lake, and Palmer's Love Beach. Thanks a lot, Ken. Question? Everything.